Hello, and welcome to a replay analysis, guys, where we have two players striving to be the best that they can be. One player drinks a six-pack every session he plays ladder, and the other player... Grim. So, Sir Gamer Moore is a six-pack guy. Grim drinks... Water. Coffee. I don't know. Caffeine. He's got his brain activated. Grim is all over the place. I've heard about this guy. He's a legend in the Diamond 3 division. Everyone talks about how he is troublesome. He kills everyone. His Zerg is unmatched. And going up against him is our student of the day, Sir Gamer Moore. He's got a mountain to climb. He basically is like a zookeeper who let the lion out of the cage. And now no one knows what to do. He's already started drinking the six-pack. You can tell. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Sir Game of War saying, what race are you, dude? And Grim throwing the good luck, have fun at him. Totally ignoring his request to know what race was, was drawn. This means that Sir Game of War's pylon is going to be going down. A little awkwardly. Forgive me more. Memories of fell orcs are growing from 10 miles away. Yeah, that's gonna happen again, Shasta, in about like three months, probably with Burning Crusade release. Get ready. Um, thank you for the bits, dude. So, Game of War, one thing I would tell you is your pylon is way too fucking close to the ramp, dude. Your pylon field is going to be like this. Like, it goes way beyond. You know you know what it should be? Your pylon field should literally be like there. Like, almost touching the ramp, but there. The reason why, once again, for anyone who does not know this, if a pylon radius... Just pre again, it's a square. I know a pylon's a circle, but pretend this is a pylon, okay? If a pylon radius is right there, Okay. Well, actually, we'll use this rock uh, for for a distinctive oh, eyesight here, yeah. for like a visual. Uh, Bu Buon, Buon, thank you for the sub. Much love for the gifted sub to Baz the Jazz. Thank you. So see this rock right here in bottom right? It's a big pebble. If that's the edge of the pylon field, just so you guys know, a gateway could be planted on that pylon field right here. Or about like right there. Why does that make sense? Because the whole building does not need to go in a pylon. Just the center of the building needs to be in a pylon. That's it. The outer sides of the of the gateway do not need to be on a pylon to be built on the pylon field. So again, pylon way too close. Pylon's way too close to the ramp. It's gonna fuck your wall up. It's only gonna actually it only would fuck your wall up if you wall here first and then go sideways, possibly. But if you put your gateway there and you put your core there, it wouldn't fuck your wall up. But the problem with that is that is a weaker wall versus mutas because whenever you have the outside of your wall open rather than the inside, it makes your units always have to walk around and then around and it makes it weaker to deal with air that goes through your base as opposed to just running directly down the ramp. Keep that in mind. All right, so get more relax, okay? Relax. So get more, you need to relax, all right? I'm actually on Grim's side for this one. Here's why. There's no requirement that this guy has to tell you his race. It's not required. If he wants to be, be secretive about his race, he totally can. It's, it's one of the perks of playing random. If he wants to tell you, that's cool. But you just call them a dick for part of what the game is. It'd be like calling someone a dick because they all end you. That's part of the game. You just gotta you gotta put down the the six pack and pick up your pants and just overcome, right? <laughs> Too late, dick. I don't have dick. Oh, well, good. Is, this, is Grandma female? 
Is she a Zerg assassin? You just made an enemy. You guys are now enemies. Sir Game of War, you're, Sir Game of War, you're like the belligerent drunk in this game right now. You gotta relax. I would say, I would say in general, if you want my opinion, streamer more, I mean, this person did say they're Zerg. If you want my opinion, I would say if they're random, I would almost always recommend you go for a one gate expand and go from there. The fact that you're two getting it now, I feel like you're going into like an all in that you don't need to. Like this is now heavy aggression. We'll see if you expand behind this, this makes no sense. Or just pilot and scout, then you can do what you want. You can also pilot and scout. Pilot and scouting is not bad. But if you pilot and scout, that doesn't change where the pilot will be, will be located. But if you pilot and scouted, your probe will be getting to his base right about now. You'd be getting to about right here, right now. And then that would uh, not only tell you, confirm what race he is, but... <laughs> perfect pause, thank you. It would not only confirm what race your opponent is, but... It would tell you if you're getting all in or not. And if you're getting all in, doing double gate on the high ground would be fine. Or if it's Protoss. The only race double gate really honestly makes sense against is Protoss. The only time I would ever tell you, you could go double gate whenever you want. Is if you really if you really know how to go double gate, which means you need to be aggressive, and you need to be efficient with your aggression. Otherwise, you're just behind. Let's watch how you play this. Are you going really fast one base DTs? You're going really fast one base DTs it looks like. Maybe charge lots, but charge lots wouldn't make a whole lot of sense because you only have one base economy. Nah, we're going... Oh my god, it's going to more. <laughs> okay. All right, he's going pretty aggressive on you. This is fucking... Okay, this is super scary. Uh, with how your units are located. I... I feel like... You would have had a better... Um, like, you're not dead, by the way. You can still overcharge your battery. But I feel like this stalker... There's, there's multiple things wrong with this right now. Number one... Your stalker could fit, like, hold on, I'm going to watch how exactly how you built this gateway. Did you actually fucking block that corner to corner? I think he did. Did you? It is, I can't really, it, does it? It looks like it's, no, you did not. It's open. It's open. I don't know why. Like, you, you, you're, you're, okay, the only reason why it feels like you did is because you're standing in the middle of the open with all of your units. I don't know why you're doing that. Just think about this, okay? So more, look at this, okay? If you click, just like with your adept, for instance, look how fucking far exposed he is, right? I mean, right now it doesn't matter because you're killing a you're killing a hatchery. Who cares? That's fine. But like right here, you stand there in the front of your gateway. You get hit by three lings at a time. This is definitely not appropriate. If you just backed up 
to where almost like the zealot is right now, but like a little bit lower than the zealot. You would be tucked back to the point to where you cannot get hit by fucking three lings at a time. It would make your adept not die, essentially. And you do the same exact thing with your stalker. So your adept died there because of that. He, he killed the ling as he died, essentially. And look at your stalker. It does the same fucking thing. You stand there and you're getting hit by fucking three lings again. In the middle of the... Like, you're just standing far in the front. If you just tucked it back a little bit... Like, right to where the green box is. Like, right about here. You would be getting hit by two lings at most, if not one ling. And the reason why I say that is because... If you have a doorway that looks like this, okay? There's a ramp. There's a gateway right there. Against it. And here's, here's your unit right now. Standing right there. If you just move the fucking stalker... So, like, you're getting hit by, like, Ling, Ling, Ling. You're just getting smashed by Lings. But if you just took your, uh, Stalker and put it, like, you took, instead of putting, having it there in the open, you put it, like, back here, like, against the fucking wall, what happens is, is the Lings now, if the Ling AI is smart, and one of the Lings from, like, right there runs directly to, like, right there, it runs on, like, the, it basically runs... Um, like from here, it goes close to the wall, like really close to the wall. And then it stands like right here and hits you as close as it can to the wall. Another link could fit right there and hit you right there. Two links could hit you at once. However, if, if he's got a bunch of links over here, just like chilling, ling, 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 whatever. And one of them runs like this and goes to the center of, of the choke point like that. There's enough room on the top and bottom side for like half of a link to fit. So if this ling were to run north or run south, another ling could fit there. But if this ling does not move and it sits here in this position where it it cock blocks both sides of the opening, only one ling at a time can hit your stalker. And it, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, it happens way more than you think when people let their lings do this. If someone just A-moves you and let it, it just they just let it A-move, usually this will happen a lot more than you think. When someone constantly move commands their army, like this, they like move command, and then they attack command, and then they move command, and then they attack command, and then they move command, and then they attack command. When they do that, when they spam click like this, lings usually will just jam pack the fucking door here really hard, and two lings will usually hit you the entire time. Because his lings are being told, the AI is being told to ram you, so their lings are going to try to efficiently like get surface area. But if he doesn't do that, if he doesn't do that move, move attack, move attack, move attack, and he just does one A move right there, his lings have a good chance to do this stupid thing where they just have one block the rest. It's very, very, very realistic. So, you, again, your stalker is just in the worst fucking position ever, and you're burning so much battery energy in the process of doing this. And you just stand there the whole time. And you literally stand there. Now look at the second stalker. The second stalker spawned behind the first stalker and you're still walled, right? You are still walled off. So like you wouldn't have died if you backed the stalker up a little bit. And for the love of God, you really need to overcharge your battery. I do not know why you chrono boosted your core. You just chrono boosted... Your gateway. And then you chrono boosted your core right after. You had like 100 energy on this nexus. You had 170 energy on this nexus. And you do not overcharge this battery once. It's out of range by one. It's not. Don't bullshit me. I know it's not. Look at your fucking dotted line. You're not out of range. If I, like, watch, I'm going to go into this replay right now. I'm going to take over and I'm going to overcharge your battery. Okay, now let's go back into your replay again and uh, watch it again. <laughs> Let me find it again. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> Don't bullshit me. I know it's in range. I love you, Sir Gamermore. Put the six pack down. <laughs> Okay, so we're going back to when the stalker died. So first stalker just straight up dies, battery runs out of energy, and you chrono boost your core and your gate. You chrono boosted the gate when you were supply blocked, and your other stalker didn't even start until your other stalker died. And then you were, and you're, uh, you don't have a pylon even on the way right now. You just have a dark shrine on the way in terms of production. And you chrono boosted your fucking prism. You are prioritizing all this, like, DT shit right here. And you just need a battery overcharge. And now now that you've killed the hatchery, and you keep letting your stalkers and your adept just, like, tank way too much damage. Like, this is awful for you right here. This is a horrible setup. Your units are all going to die now. But now you're being forced to pull probes. And you're losing probes like crazy. This guy kill this guy actually sacrifices some of his lings to kill your pylon. If I were him, I would have killed your probes, to be honest. Because you had nothing defending and your one base economy. So unpowering a gateway is not as good as literally just killing your one base economy. I would put you into a uh Wait, what? Good call not to say it too late. You'd be fucked. You gotta calm down, Sir Game War. You're toxic right now. Okay, proxy at Nexus. Second battery. Second battery is not necessary. Again, all you gotta do is battery overcharge. You do not need a second battery. You do need another gateway. You need four gates. Also, Sir Gamer Moore, your strategy of choice, I don't agree with it at all. Because you, I understand you didn't know what race he was and you built a, a pylon on the high ground. I understand that. But you're doing a DT timing on one base. You literally teched to one base DTs. But you wait to actually attack your opponent with DTs. Until after you fucking expand. If you're going to expand, expand when you're on a core rather than when you're on a fucking dark shrine. Because all you do, all you just did was you have two gateways. Like how long has your dark shrine been done for? You rushed the dark shrine, right? Your dark shrine finishes at four minutes. And 20 seconds, 420 blaze up. I get that you're getting attacked. This was very manageable. This attack had no purpose breaking you. Very, 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 very manageable defense here. That If you just change up how you stand with your units. Like, you could have literally lost zero units. You had a battery. It was in range of the overcharge. And you had a fucking adept and a zealot and three stalkers. You could have easily killed this in a little doorway. But you fucking finished your Dark Shrine at 420 and you don't even make a DT until over a minute later. Because you fucking expand. So this is one of those things where it's just priority. If you're gonna expand, you want you might as well do it before. Because if, if a two base, if there's a build that's like a two base DT opener, like the standard build where people like to go for, uh, you know, gateway, expand, core, and then they go into a council first and they go into a robo and a dark shrine, like they're that kind of a player, their DTs hit a zerg base just before five minutes on two base economy. 
and your fucking stalker is in the front of your goddamn wall again. I hate the way you position your units, dude. Fucking back up to like right there. I think you're just paranoid that you that you think uh this the lings will just run by your units. You're like, if I stand too far back, lings flood in my base. And this is gonna get you killed every time. You gotta definitely uh find the sweet spot. What's wrong with this position? Not trolling. What's wrong with this position is that right now there are 22 probes. And what was the trade off of why there are 22 probes? It's because it was a DT rush, it was DT priority. And DT priority is what would usually tell you oh, that's why our economy is low. But the trade-off is, you get DTs in your opponent's base by, like, just after four minutes. Like, around, literally... Like, when the Dark Shrine's done, there should have been a Warp Prism already across the map. Or a Proxy Pylon. Don't even honestly need a Prism with this build. Prism is a two-base kind of a thing, honestly. It's like more expensive. It's more tech. If you want to go fucking one-base Dark Templar, just put a fucking Pylon over here. Use this probe, instead of building this nexus, put a pylon over there. And then the second the Dark Shrine's done, you warp in DTs immediately. And then you're attacking the Zerg's base by 4 minutes and like 32 seconds. With DTs in his base. Is there a DT in bottom right corner? No, it's a nexus. So, guys... Let me give you a compare. Let me give you a comparison, okay? Because uh, I feel like people aren't understanding. If you are a fucking Zerg player, okay? If I'm a Zerg player, and I go one base lurkers, I literally go one base lurker, and then I don't attack my opponent when I have a lurker den, and instead I sit there and I expand. Why the fuck did I go lurkers first? If I'm a Terran player and I go one base battle cruiser. And then I make a. I don't even make a. I make the fusion core. I make the starport, and then I just sit there on a on a starport that is doing nothing, and then I go. You know what? Time to fucking make a command center. It doesn't make sense. Why double gas tech your base up, and then expand? It like you have to do one or the other. You have to if you go double gas early and you actually invest into tech, you need to fucking use your tech. If you go, if you don't do that though, you are totally viable to expand and then and then tech later. Because the difference right now in the position that this is is, is for Protoss is that right now th this is what Protoss should have in a realistic game. Okay, this is what Protoss oh, should have. Yeah. Uh, Boo! Thank you very much for the seven month resub. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pro Protoss right now, if this was a two base build, should have four gateways. A Dark Shrine, a Robo, about 50 probes, a third base that is about one third of the way done, and already attacking the Zerg with fucking DTs or possibly Archons if the Zerg was ready for DTs, which he kind of, well, he has at least has detection, but he has no units right now, so he's actually not ready. So that's what he should have. If this was at the 526 mark of the game, that's very realistic to what he should have. Uh, and if he doesn't have that, and instead has fucking 22 probes, that's fucking brutal. <laughs> this is so far behind. And the DTs haven't, like, it was, D, again, DT priority, right? And the DTs haven't even attacked yet. And we're going on six minutes soon. <laughs> Fucking move your stalker, Sir Grimmore. Jesus Christ. The stalker is irritating me. <laughs> okay, now we got two DTs. Where are we going? You are so. <laughs> Sir Grimmore. I just want to rip you. I want to rip you a new ass just for a second, okay? This is how I see you when you play StarCraft. 
You know what you remind me of, Sir Gamermore, when you play StarCraft sometimes? You remind me of a guy who just watched, like, the Harlem Globetrotters. And they're just, you got, like, one guy, like, you're watching him on, like, TV, and he's, like, spinning the ball on his finger. He's now spinning the ball on his other finger. He's, like, spinning the ball with his nose on his finger. And then now he's got two balls spinning. And then somehow he fucking puts his pinkies out, and now he's got four balls spinning on his hands like that. And then he puts his head back, and someone else spins it on literally his nose, and he's like, and then he goes like, and then he like does something where he like throws the balls, and he like even makes baskets with them. He's like a super balling, uh, you know, he's doing some flashy shit with basketballs. And what I see you doing is you have someone else that you're like, hey, hey, check this out. And someone is like watching you try to attempt this. And you put your finger out and you have a ball on top of it. You balanced it and you try to start spinning it. And you literally throw the ball and you like hit that person in the face. And you're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me do it again. You hit them in the face again. And you're like, oh, I got it this time. I promise. <laughs> Let's go. And then you like hit yourself in the face. <laughs> like it's just, it's so fucking fancy. And it's, it's fucking like all over the place. Cause you you warped in DTs. Like I just want I just want you to watch this, okay, for a second. You warp in DTs, right? Right here. Not only are you doing it in his fucking vision, but you're warping in DTs. DTs are done at 5:45. You immediately load the prism. That's nice. Then you wait uh, like two seconds to unfreeze it. That's not bad. But then what does the prism do? You fly up. And away from his base. And then you go curve to the left. And did you even... Did you turn your prism as well when he could see you? I'm just curious. No, you didn't. Okay. So that's good, at least. But then... Uh, yeah, thank you for the bits. But I can micro like parting and macro like vibe. Am I wrong? You're wrong. <laughs> You might be able to macro like me, because my I'm pretty bad at this game nowadays. Uh, but then you dr you drop a DT, right? You drop a DT right there. Now you're going further, and your DT starts walking in the natural. And watch, like, look at the movement of your prism. Look at just look at look at the micro here. You drop a DT. You keep going. Now the second you move. The second you move the DT, you move the prism as well. This makes me think you did select our army. Not, no, you didn't. You didn't entirely do that. I don't know what the fuck was up with your prism for a second, but you moved it down, and then you like oh, no, 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 back up, go back up, right here. Like I don't know what was going on there for a second, but that's not that big of a deal. I feel like you might have just like moved your screen around or some shit. But now what happens here? I want to see what your micro looks like. What is your, this is, again, you just turned a DT drop into an advanced, more difficult version of a DT drop, right? What does this DT do? <laughs> okay, now what does this one do? Now, <laughs> what does this one do? So, the reason why it feels so hard is there's two reasons why what you're doing feels fucking difficult. <laughs> Number one, you're trying to do fancier micro than you can handle. Because the second you ran into fucking detection here, you should have immediately fucking turned around. There's no fucking way one DT is going to beat like 12 lings without the evacuation of a prism. And a fucking spine and three queens. <laughs> There's no fucking way that DT was going to win that fight. But you didn't even look at it. You just said A move, forget about it. You have the mind... You're thinking about StarCraft 2 in the wrong way. You have the mindset that the more multitask you make your opponent do by setting up multitask for yourself means the more chance you're going to break them. So what I mean by that is is when you fucking drop a, a DT off here, you have the mindset by doing that, by going, well, if I drop a DT here and then I do DTs here, he's going to have to defend two at once, and DTs are super annoying because they're cloaked. 
So he'll probably lose more than he, than he, you know, than he realizes by the time I'm done attacking him. Like, you probably think it's going to go great. And you want to know something? It would have actually been pretty decent if you would have fucking just done a one base DT all in like you wanted to originally. Because he would not have, like, look at what could have happened. Okay, remember? Let's go back. So you attacked him at like 6 minutes and 20 seconds, right? What is this? This DT dies at like 6.05 uh, or so. So you attacked him around just after 6 minutes. Let's go back. Your, your shrine finished at 4.20. Now let's pretend you warped in DTs at right at 4.20 at a proxy pylon. And then you attacked him at like 4.36. So like let's say a pylon was right there and you warp in DTs. It takes about 11 seconds for a warp in to happen without a warp gate. So now at 4.31 the DT starts walking. So pretend my mouse is a Dark Templar, okay? And pause it. And we'll continue from right there. And let's look at his main. He's got fucking nothing. If you actually just committed to it in the first place, it could have worked. You could have literally ran one DT here, one DT there, and you could have won the game right now. Your shrine's fucking done, and it's been done since 420. So, if you could have gotten DTs into his base by like 445, this dude has no detection. He also has no lings. Big missed opportunity. And why did you not do that? Because you chose to fucking expand. <laughs> also, your defense was just abysmal. Uh, we talked about that already. About Just stop fucking standing in, like there to defend your fucking gateways. That's like every... When I, when I, as a Zerg player, that's like a wet dream. To be like, wow. This guy is like over committing his unit through the doorway. Like hard. Like, think about it like this, okay? Think about it like this. I want to... We're going to go to the Discovery Channel for a second. What if there was a turtle versus, like, a spider? Like, a tarantula versus, like, a snapper turtle or some shit. I don't know. And then they're like, look at the turtle in his natural habitat. He's walking around slowly, and before he knows it, the spider jumps down from the top of a log and falls on him. And... So that's biting the top of his head. And how is the turtle going to defend that? Most of the time a turtle will usually like pull back into his shell and then just like fucking he'll like bite the spider's legs or some shit as it tries to like go in the shell with the turtle. Much more doable. The shell is like his wall, right? But it, imagine if a turtle, if you watch a turtle where it's like this guy has a turtle shell and he just literally is sticking his neck out all the way and like the turtle recedes into his shell. It, He's going to recede into his shell, I'm sure of it. He's not receding into the shell. He's... L I think it's going to die. Oh, the turtle... It, it's actually fallen over. It's The neck is coming apart now. The turtle is literally dead. Use your fucking walls. Use your turtle shell. You made it for a reason. If you don't even use the wall, you might as well not even build the wall. <laughs> Use the fucking wall. Just use the wall. Please. <laughs> okay. So we'll go back to when your prism had around six minutes when it floated around his base. And your prism gets in and you poke. Check this, check, actually, check this out. What are, we, what are you doing in the meantime? Really quickly. So you just made two probes on your Nexus. How often does that happen? One probe. You're currently missing this one. Building nothing. One probe. Only one probe still. And I know you're trying to get ready for DTs. You're prioritizing DTs right now. So that's why your probes aren't being made very much. Because you're like, I gotta get my DTs out. But now you just made the DTs. You just made the DTs. Now let's... As you try to do your fancy attack... Remember how I said the more fancy and more uh, aggressive you play, the more you don't macro? Let's watch your money right now. As you start this fight, watch your money and watch your production. Look 
Look at your money. Look at your production. You're building nothing. You're still building nothing. You built a DT. You're building nothing. You're building nothing. You're building three zealots. And you're building charge now. Nothing else. And you're building nothing. And you're building another nexus! Like, if you're gonna expand, make probes. You're at seven minutes in the game and you're on 25 fucking probes. Are you building probes yet? No. <laughs> this is anti fucking macro right now. <laughs> See, like right there, too? You. How long? Like, here's an example again, right? You're. What is this wall? Uh, you're starting it, which is fine, but. It's. Your unit's positioning is just a little fucked up. I love that you unload the DT here. You, But I would say, here's what you should do, micro-wise, okay? And I think this is, again, where you're trying to micro like a fancy pants, but you don't know exactly what you're doing. This is how you should micro this. If you were, if you were like, balling out of control, like, if I was to watch this and be like, you know what, Sir Gamer Moore? I'm fucking impressed by this engagement. Nicely done. The way you micro it is you don't fucking green box everything and then click the prism. You know what that means? It means you fucking panicked. And you're like, ah, I'm gonna die! Ah! But what you should do, just grab your click your prism, just click your prism, and you right click a unit as it loses its shields. And you, like, ideally your prism's like over here, not directly on top of the lings. Your prism would be like over here, or like over here. Why would this be important? Because Lings have to run around a gateway. What if you loaded up your prism right here? You went loaded here. Lings come around this way. You load up your prism over here and drop it, and Lings have to go all the way around again. You load up again and drop here, and Lings have to go all the way around again. There's so many ways you could do this with just what you have. But simply put, if you just right click, if you just right click the, the unit that is losing shields, like as it loses shields, you just fucking tell the prism, load that one unit. Right click the one unit with it, because if you right click the prism, if the prism is selected and you right click the stalker with it, it picks up the stalker. So if you pick up a stalker because it lost its shields, then you pick up your adepts because they lost their shields and you drop them off over here. This way your DT is on the ground the entire time and he just swipes lings all day. You could have saved this pylon and you could have killed these lings much faster to go back to macroing. Now, let's watch again at 7.14 when the fight starts how long you don't make probes for. Because you micro this poorly and you panic. And then you fly around for a while. Yeah, like right now, again, you're at 24 probes. You actually are down a probe from about a minute ago. You're at 7 minutes and 40 seconds in this game, and you're at 24 probes. And you're only making one probe again. You're making one probe at a time. <laughs> oh boy, this game is just a clusterfuck right now. And this pylon, you built this pylon too high. That gateway will not be powered by it. You can eyeball, and once you get really good with pylons, you can eyeball it. This pylon needs to be right there to power that bottom gateway. That is too high. This pylon, this gateway will stay underpowered. Because again, you have to do, you have to have the center of the gateway in the pylon field, and the center, the, the pylon field is going to be about there. That's about how far it will stretch, barely off. And now he finds your proxy base, which has no pylon, so you can't warp into anything at it. That's unfortunate. This pilot gateway will still be underpowered. And now your proxy's dead.
And now you're going into a tech transition of double oh, Stargate. Yeah. Off of 23 probes. You can't afford this. So game or more. You know I love you. You know I love you, man. But this game you're showing me right now is even worse than Larry the Prism Pilot or whatever the fuck. Walter the Warp Prism Pilot. Go, go, go. This game is even worse than that. The fuck is this game, dude? You just, you're like, you don't macro at all. You are not even trying to macro. This game is for the people. And like you're doing it again. Look at this fucking. Th okay, thank God. I was about to say, look, look at your walls, dude. Fix your walls. You just did. Thank God. That that adept location right now is good. That is good. That's a great location for the adept. You might even be able to move it slightly back, but I'm gonna say that's still an A plus for me. You're tucked into the doorway. You're not outside of the doorway. And here's the crazy thing as well, is you're going for you're going for another attack that he already defended three minutes ago. He already defended this three minutes ago. He's already been prepared for this. And how do you know he's been prepared for this? He killed your fucking DTs with lings and queens, and he made spines. The only way this gets damage done is if you find new expansions that are not set up yet. So if you go right back to the main base, like where are you clicking with this prism? I want to see what you like. What your prism is clicking. Do you shift command it at all? Are you telling it to go here? Oh, you're, cl you're clicking there. Okay. So, the idea of this now, I would say, is okay. If you're gonna go for an expansion, it makes more sense. If you flew right back to his main base, I'd be like, "What the hell's going on? Why are we going to the main again when he's already defended there?" Like with just two DT, because again, this is just two DTs. This is not going to be a massive warp in, because right now you're busy on 33 probes going double Stargate Void Rays. This might do damage for real, because it's a new expansion. And it's doing damage. <laughs> I don't agree with this zealot weapon. This is overkill. I would say two zealots. I'm not the. I'm not gonna go against it too hard because you can load them all into the prism and actually save them all. But the fact that you just warped in three zealots means that guaranteed at least one of these units is gonna die. Uh, if the zerg comes to try and defend, and you're already gonna kill it with two DTs. This is just. I feel like this is a waste of 300 minerals. And it's because you're getting fancy and you're trying to multi-prong. He's already defended. So the fact that you multi-prong that, I disagree with it again. Like, watch your DTs. He's legit already defended here. He has Spine Spore. You kill a queen and your DTs die. That is not a good trade. It doesn't even matter if he has mutas or not there. He had spine spore. The spine is in a weird location, but he has fucking spine spore. And you saw this earlier. There's no way that's going to do damage. Because, again, your prism is not designed to do warp ins. It's not. You don't have enough money for that. Your prism is designed to do harass. So you should not harass a base that has static D at it. Because your DTs will just die. Like, you, if you kill that base and you fly away with the prism, that would have been much better. And then you maybe, like, check other expansions, like, over here or something. <clears throat> and the biggest thing of all is you're just not macroing it at all this game. You have 38 probes at 10 and a half minutes. Like that's gonna, that, that, I can't even begin to tell you how far behind. And now you're going for, uh, you're doing every tech path possible except for Robo Bay. You're going for Archons with 
Temple Archives and Storm. You have two gases running, and you're trying to afford Dark Shrine, Robo, fucking Council upgrades with Blink and Charge. You're getting fucking uh, Double Stargate, Void Rays, and Phoenix. And you're making units off of seven gates on a two base economy, which is soon to be one base economy because your main base is mining out here pretty soon. Like, you cannot afford this. Isn't this to be the GM buffet build? Yeah. Maybe in a 2040 when I lose my fucking mind. <laughs> and again right there I think that was another missed opportunity missed opportunity again hold on watch <clears throat> mutas fly in your base overseer whatever look at this mutas fly in your base right now there's nine of them but mutas fly in your base they engage on top of the Phoenix, next to a battery, and your Stalkers, and your Voids. Your Phoenix, definitely, right now, this is what your mic again, if we're talking perfect micro, right? Your Phoenix should move just a little bit of a smidge to the right to actually be in range of the battery, or a little bit of a smidge down to be in range of the other battery. You have a lot of batteries, but you're sitting, only one Phoenix right now can be healed by a battery. The other ones are out of range of the battery. And then you move over to the battery. But you only have to move to a battery for legit about one second, and then you go back to the mutas. A battery heals shields ridiculously fast. And you actually turn around. But your Phoenix... You have no control groups, so I mean... <clears throat> I feel like you have no uh, units right now. Like, being controlled. Like, with actually, like, precision. But if you chase... If you chase these mutas, you can kill all four of them. Or, uh, sorry, all five of them. Easy, 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 easy. Like, you're right on his ass right now. And a muta is a 5.6 move speed unit. A phoenix is a 5.95. Like, your phoenix, if they chase the mutas, you'd probably start shooting his mutas right about here. Right about there. Because you move a little bit faster than mutas. And you would kill them all before he gets back to his base. Because phoenix kill mutas ridiculously fast. But you stop as soon as you engage the overlord. Because you're on A move. And you're also selecting your entire army. Because everything is moving together. Now, the fact that you're doing a counterattack, this is bold. I don't think this is time to do a counterattack, by the way. Uh, I, I do think you should move out with your Phoenix, but I do not think you should move out with your army. And the reason why you shouldn't move out with your army is because that was the first time this entire game you had a win. The whole game. This game is 12 minutes long. And you guys have fought each other about seven times by now. Like, seven different battles have ensued throughout this game. And you've lost every single one of them. This was the first time you've actually won a battle. And it wasn't even an entire army from Zerg. It was just nine mutas. That's not every... That's not his whole army. So the fact that you're moving out right now, I feel like you're setting yourself up to get run over. Because there's too many negatives that have happened this game for you to have a positive to where you can win the game at this point. You should die for pushing right now. Well, this guy is just running mutas into you half-assedly. Not in a great way. He also has 4,000 minerals. Oh, now he's starting to make Hydras. 
I agree with the Hydras, honestly. You should not be making mass meters against Phoenix. And then you lose your whole army. See, like, right there, for instance. Here's a for instance, okay? Right here. You got that base. You actually killed that. I don't think you even should have pushed, but you actually killed that base. So that went well for you. But one thing I think you need to... Would, would benefit you a lot better is if you are willing to play the conservative game rather than the all-in game. Like, imagine if you had an observer and you actually managed to kill this base and you kill creep. And then you fucking just, like, back off and you make sure this base doesn't exist. And then you go around the map and you, you, you kill any creep in this area that might exist. And you work your way over to, like, this base that existed already before. And you work creep down. Like, you stay on the outer edges of Zerg. You don't actually move into his base. Because when you don't kill his creep at all, and you also just move into the heart of his base, you're just asking to just get run over. Because, again, you've had a lot of losses up to this point in this game. Uh, like, you have not won many battles yet. You've won two battles now, at this point right now. Uh, and if the Zerg keeps taking crappy battles, then it makes more sense to keep pushing if that happens. But let's watch this fight for a second. So, like, what is happening with the Phoenix right now? Like, those Phoenix engaged... They finally engaged the Mutas when, like, half your Stalkers are already dead. And your Voids have all, both pretty much lost shields. Like, what were, you lo what were you looking at when this happened? You're looking at the fight. This is so bold, the way you micro it, the way you move out like that. Yeah, like you were looking at it the whole time. You were not surprised. So I feel like it's just a misunderstanding of uh, what you need and where you need it. You definitely, uh, you A-moved like right there with your whole army. It's just that your stalkers and your void rays got tagged on his army. <laughs> if the Zerg is going to engage you, A-move right back at him if you have to take the fight. You A-moved up there. Don't, don't A-move defensively. You're, you're, like, if you're going to A-move defensively, don't fucking walk on a creep like this. Like, the fact that you, the fact that you made the choice right here to go, okay, yeah, let's walk up there now. That meant you're aggressive again. The fact that you chased him all the way down the map, that also meant you were aggressive again. This is fast and loose Protoss right here. And you, you push your army to the point, and you don't micro a single unit, but you push your army to the point to where it basically all dies. And then you stop microing your Phoenix, and you don't pick up Hydras. And you're trying to kill an Overseer. What is so important about that Overseer? You just lost fucking two extra Phoenix for that Overseer. Do you have DTs walking into his base right now? No. <laughs> you just wanted to kill it because it's OCD and you're like, I'm going to fucking get it. Come here, Overseer. And you fly back into Hydras. this up. <laughs> this game is fucked up. Your army is so diverse. You're, you're trying to play the Rubik's Cube of Protoss. You're trying to do everything. Just pick a, pick a color and go with it. Pick one color. Don't solve the whole cube. Just solve one side. Pick one build to work with and stick to it. You've done this game so far. You've done an all-in DT build. And then you switched into a macro charge lot build. And then you switched into a fucking double stargate void ray build. And then you reacted to a uh, double stargate phoenix stalker build. And then you switched into a fucking templar storm build. And now you're going into a robo build. With stalkers. And more phoenix again. Your build is all over the place.
And like an example of how you, saying that your build is really diverse and you're not microing it properly is that's the first time I've seen you pick up units. And you actually picked up... What did you pick up right there? Did you pick up a Protoss unit? You haven't picked up a single gravity beam this whole game. When it would have helped a lot down here versus the mutas and the hydras. Speed it up. Go, 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 go. I want to see what you pick up here. And I think you fly I think you fly these Phoenix over Hydras and they die. Look at these Phoenix. So these Phoenix come in now. You pick up a Hydra. And you pick up the fuck is that other unit? Do you pick up your own unit? Or it's so hard to see what they're they is it a Zergling? It's a Zergling. Okay, it is a Zergling. You pick up a Hydra and a Ling. You are going to win this fight because this guy is going Corruptors now. This game is legit all over the place. But, like, look at the... the here, let's take one Gander again really fast. I don't even know your probe count right now. I haven't looked at it in a while. But I'm going to guess what it is, okay? I'm not even going to look at your bases. I'm not going to calculate. I'm just going to guess. We're at 15 minutes and 30 seconds. And I think your probe count right now is about 42. 42 probes. Let's see what you are. You're at 41 probes. You cannot afford all of this shit with 40... One probes. And look what you're doing. You're chasing him. If this army dies, this is going to cost you... Like, this is the kind of shit, again, that'll cost you the game. Is it really worth it? Like, think about think, think about this for a second. Think about future investments, okay? Uh, is this Zest versus Renor analysis from earlier today? Yes. Yes, it is. Think about it for a second. Now, let's just see if this makes sense, Sir Gamer War. You are chasing corruptors with blink stalkers into Zerg territory to try and kill them. I'm going to watch you do it a little bit further. I'm going to take away the production tab as well. But do you actually blink further in or do you leave now? What are you doing with these? This is this is the kind of move out shit where I'm like, I just I'm, you're going here it seems like. You're just asking to die. So you stop chasing the corruptor. I was going to say this. If you chase the Corruptor all the way and then keep trying to blink on him and kill him, blink on him and kill him, blink on him and kill him, it would be a thing where I, I would ask you a question and be like, what are you making as a follow-up to that? If you're like, Archons? I'd be like, why the fuck do you need to kill Corruptors and, and risk your entire Stalker Ball if you're going to make Archons and like Zealots and like Immortals? Fucking Corruptors can't even do anything there. Like they literally are useless there. But if you're like, I'm going to make carriers, I'd be like, okay, that makes a little more sense. But even then, it's still risky to run your stalkers across the map like that. But at least that makes more sense if you're willing to lose some stalker to kill corruptor to remake carrier. Or something in the air, essentially. What are you actually making right now? You're making probes. Thank God you're making probes. Okay, so you run here. I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. I am not going to be surprised if at 16 minutes... In 20 seconds, we're watching the last unit here die. I think I'm not going to be surprised if at 1620, the last stalker falls over and dies. This is not the time to push your opponent again with a harass army. So you recalled three of them out, but you lost like five or six of them. You're getting overconfident. You're getting, you're getting, you like, you keep getting to the point to where you're so ambitious. Like what? I feel like the biggest problem here is, is I think that you are playing a game of StarCraft 2 where you are so wrapped up in the mindset of you think you can out multitask your opponent. I really think you think that, Sir Gamer Moore. I think that you think that your DT shenanigans are unmatched for the level of your play. 
and you can break people all day with out multitasking them with your with your uh, with your like special tactics essentially but you have to realize the tempo of a game decides whether that's going to work or not and if you take bad situation after bad situation after bad situation after bad situation that does not mean the game resets so if this was a game where you were ahead if you were ahead and you had a zerg throw an army away i would not have questioned you and been like why are you attacking with your stalkers i would have been like oh the zerg is so far behind and he just threw away another army yeah definitely go kill one of his expansions that's totally fine makes sense but you're the one who's behind this game massively because you've had bad investment after bad investment repeatedly like you invested in a D the game opened with you investing in the dts that killed about three zerglings like legit you killed like three zerglings with those dts and they all died and then you also proxy nexus and it got scouted and it died when it had like four probes on it those two openers of this game were both massively negative for you to put you into the fucking hole, essentially, for the rest of the game. And then there was more shit afterwards that continued to happen on both sides for where both of you made a couple of good or bad choices. But you keep doing this thing where every time the Zerg attacks you, you feel the need to take your entire army and attack him with it as well. And just imagine if you allowed yourself to defend a couple times in a row where the Zerg makes mistake after mistake after mistake, and you have three in a row on your side that gives you positive, 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 and now finally when you attack them, you actually have a genuine large army and a very powerful push, rather than pushing with like seven stalkers and losing four of them or five of them or something. Because you're, okay, your DT backs up, thank God. Okay, now it's going forward again. And you're not making probes. Again, we're at 16 and a half minutes and you're on 47 probes. Just imagine if you made probes ever. <laughs> Make probes. This game is more I love you, man, but this game is so fucked up. I, I wish... it. it the thing that's crazy too is if we actually looked at all your production, if we actually calculated how many seconds your production was idle this game, it would be ridiculously high. I would I would feel, I would honestly assume, percentage-wise, if we calculated how idle all of your production was all game, I would say it's around 85% idle. Like, all, all of your production combined... I really feel like about 85% of the time in this game so far, you have not been building units because you can't afford what you have. He's just burrowing right here to be annoying. Excuse me. You know what would be cool? Sergei Memorial Shit. Let me blow your mind really fast. If you actually walked a stalker right here and you attacked it with an Archon, just one auto attack from an Archon onto a stalker right there, you would kill a Zergling and you'd be able to build a Nexus there. There's a Zergling right there. If you had a stalker standing right there, and you auto attack it, it would splash the Ling and kill it. Now, yeah, he's, this guy, this is just the power of one player starting to macro a little bit. Like, look at this guy's bank. 
And look at his supply. That's crazy. This guy could be maxed out with this much bank. He's gonna max out a long time ago. It's almost 20 minutes in the game. But now you're fighting an army that's massive, and you're also not using storm at all as the army engages you. Right now you only have one storm, so that would need to be like the best storm of your life. And I don't think you cast storm even before you die. Templar doesn't even cast storm and it dies. Such a dick in this game, Circuit Robot. <laughs> You're crazy. Uh, Sir Game Robot, that answer me a question for real, okay? I was joking when I said you had a six pack, but were you actually drunk when you played this game? <laughs> I know you can play better than this. I know you I know you're capable of playing like ten times better than this. You're high as fuck? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the, the underlying factor of this game, the, the big story is that you just don't macro. You're not macroing any economy out of this at all. So, like, at 22 minutes in the game, you're still on 48 probes. <clears throat> it's rough. But the Zerg might fall into the trap of not knowing how to deal with Sky Toss, and you might actually win this game. Storm him! Storm his ass! Ah! Doesn't even matter. But I mean, if you would have stormed him, it would increase the chances your Archon wouldn't have died. If that Archon dies, like if you think about it like that, if there's like 10 Hydras clumped up and your Archon's engaging the Hydras while your carriers are also engaging, would you rather spend the energy on the Templar to spend one Storm and guaranteed not lose your Archon, or save the Storm and potentially lose the Archon? Like that Archon almost fucking died. Shit like that is, uh, you know, definitely want to use your abilities. Oh no. Not worth it. <clears throat> that is not worth it. Don't ever do that again. Do not ever do this again. The only time you should ever do this. <laughs> but macro. Yeah, you know how many... Guess how many... Okay. How many probes does it take to fully saturate the middle line for what the game says? It's like 16. How many do you think this takes now? How many do you think this takes to now saturate that middle line properly? Because you moved it back two grids. It's no, it's no longer 16. 24? It's not even 20. That's probably like 30. Legit, yeah, like 30. This travel distance is fucking massive. Like, you'd be better off building a pylon and a cannon, or just sending an observer over. Here's, a, here, like, here, here's an idea, okay? For instance, if you know you have control, you could even, like, you could even recall an observer. You could be like, hey, one of my observers, recall it back, and then observer, move over here if you really needed this desperately fast. Otherwise, just fucking chrono boost out a new observer. And rally it to the location. 
Or just build a pylon and a cannon at it and then build your nexus. Any of these things are better than doing that. I'm happy you have observers with your army though. You're actually killing creep this time. The Zerg is probably going to die though because he just doesn't have any gas. Game War, you're a fucking, you're a wild man, dude. <laughs> I like how a viper approaches your carriers and your immediate response is to storm it. Fucking feedback, dude. <laughs> uh, you storm the viper, the viper was in and out of it for like half a second and then it just parasitic bombs your fucking carriers. <laughs> Oh my god, the Archon died to Broodlings. Poor Archon. That's the humiliation death right there. Oh, how much reduction is going on behind this? <clears throat> Two pylons. I gotta give it to uh, Grim. He even still GG'd you. You were being pretty mean to him, Sir Gamer Moore. How did this game start off? It started off by you asking his race twice. And then he says, hi, good luck, have fun, I'm Zerg. And then he said it too late, and you said it, he's a fucking dick for saying it too late. <laughs> he was a nice guy. Yeah, I'm on Grim's side on this one, Sir Gamer Moore, okay? If I was in court, I'd find your ass guilty. Okay, fucking poor Grim. <laughs> well, Sir Gamer Moore, thank you very much for buying an analysis. <laughs> Much love for the analysis, dude. Uh, this game had so many problems. And the, you don't want to know, I, like, the biggest problem out of all of these. There's two underlying problems with this build. Two major ones. We are we already whispered, or uh, we already, uh, we, are, we already talked about all the, the problems throughout this game. But I'll reiterate two problems that are, like, by far the most important. Number one. Make fucking probes. Make probes. Just for the love of God, make probes. That's the number one problem you, that we've talked about. You know, I'm sure you know this. A thousand times over, make probes. Number two, have a fucking plan. If you're going to one base all in, one base all in. If you're going to expand, expand and then use tech after you expand. Do not tech up to a one base all in and then expand and then do it all and then do a timing. Like you have to have a fucking plan. If you have no plan and your build is like, it starts like going, it, it starts off, it goes up and it goes left and then it goes right and then it goes left and then it goes right. You're going to be getting to your destination extremely late. Just, just here, let me give you an analogy, okay? Let me give it. A, this is an analogy everybody understands, and then this will be how we end this replay analysis. Imagine, imagine if you had two guys in a race in the, like the Olympics, like they're like imagine like a big circle track and field type thing going on, and then there's like six lanes, and only two of these lanes are being used by two runners, 
and they're going to do a big oval one time, and whoever wins the race wins. Imagine one guy who just stays in his lane, and he goes the whole fucking time, straight forward the whole time in his lane, and he goes from beginning to end. He goes pretty fast. And imagine if his opponent, the other racer, the other guy not only goes in his lane, but he goes to the lane to the right, to the right, to the right. He, like, he like goes like all the way to the end, and then he zigzags all the way through it. He just fucking zigzags the whole way to the fucking track where it'd be like, let me give you a fucking paint example, okay? You got two racers, okay? This is this is the track right here, right there. That's the track, and then there's a, uh, there's a, like one of the laps looks like that, and whatever. Uh, you got a guy, the, the inside guy is, <laughs> this is looking like a vagina. <laughs> let's not, let's not color code it the other way. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is five drawing? Okay, let's uh, so <laughs> let's use it. Uh, these uh, blue. <laughs> no, I'm not using red or pink. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> okay, uh, so you got runner one. Okay, he's the guy who he starts like right here. And he just goes around, and then he's done. Okay, that's runner one. That's runner number one. Right, that's the guy with a plan with his build. Ban incoming. And then you have runner two who starts back here because his. Or sorry, no, it would be more like he would start up here because it's the wider one. He starts up there, and then instead of just going like that and going around, and then he's done. Instead, what happens is he goes like this. And he's done. Just fucking all over the place, zigzag like you're in the macro lane, you're in the all in lane, you're in the macro lane, all in, macro, all in, macro, all in, macro, all in, macro, all in. Like, where are we going with the build? First, you make fucking double stargates, and then you make units out of them for 30 seconds, and then you make a nexus, and then you start making probes for 30 seconds, and then you make go back and make a Templar archives and three more gateways. <laughs> And then you go back and make another nexus and you make probes for 20 seconds. But Vibe, I didn't make Tempest at least right. And cannons. I do good. No, you did not do good. That game was awful. Thank you very much to Gamer More for the bits. And also doing the replay analysis. Uh, you were super high, so I understand. <laughs> that game was fucking terrible. I think it was, uh, it was genuinely, I think, the worst game I've ever seen you play. <laughs> And I know you can play better than that, which is why I'm telling you that. I'm being so blunt right there. I know you're totally capable of playing better than that. Um, but yeah, guys. Macro. Okay, anyone out there who wants to learn from this? Macro, guys. Just, just fucking macro. Um, definitely have a plan and macro. But thank you for watching, everybody. I, I uh, appreciate it. Much love. I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, whatever one that might be. And until then, take it easy. Much love. Have a wonderful night. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace, guys. See you.